Since childhood, I've often been enamored by displays of extraordinary memory by people who seem to be no different than you and I. I'm sure all of you have probably felt the same way on many an occasion. After all, doesn't it make us wonder how someone can be so great at learning things while we face a constant struggle? Today, I'm going to let you in on a secret, one that can change your life. It certainly changed mine. I'm going to tell you about a simple method which will help you learn anything super quick. Yes, that's right. We're going to unravel the secrets to being an efficiently quick learner. Now, before I begin, I must tell you that while the method in itself is quite systematic in its approach and effective in its outcomes, adopting and adapting this method to your life is going to take a little practice. But once you're there, it's going to make learning even complicated things reasonably simple and as quick as can be. So now let's get straight to it. The methodology I've developed for myself over the years is quite literally called SIMPLE. S-I-M-P-L-E, an acronym. It really is just that. Six baby steps that can help you supercharge your brain to accomplish remarkable feats of learning. So when I was an engineering student at IIT Bombay pursuing my dual degree, I had to submit a master's project thesis. And for any of you familiar with the process, the first step in the research journey involves literature survey reading an extensive set of research articles on your chosen area of work written by other researchers. The process can get really intimidating. There is so much to read and such limited time. And that's when the first step of this method actually rescued me big time. The first step is S, sensory involvement. That is seeing, speaking, writing, touching and hearing. So basically what you do is that you involve as many senses as possible in the process of immersing yourself in learning. That way, if one sense feels exhausted, the others help balance the load of learning and together the process becomes much less fatiguing and much faster. Now what I did for my learning process was that I started reading the contents of the paper out aloud under my breath so that I don't disturb the others while actually dragging the cursor over the screen to highlight the text that I was reading as I went along. Now that way, my hands help my eyes focus on a particular area of the page while my speech was getting fed back to me as an audible input, as if someone is reading to me. Now this maximized my sensory involvement as much as I could probably manage to do. And what happened because of this? Well, it allowed me to improve focus and retain information for much, much longer without tiring out. But you see, this in itself is not sufficient. Why? Because the amount of work done is humongous. So I needed another step in the right direction. And here I figured step two. Step two is I, identification. You need to figure out the three most important points to focus on in a given page, paragraph or section of information. Remember, the key is just three important points. Now what that does is it doesn't overload you with needless issues and keeps your brain tricked into feeling that the content is easy enough to master quickly because there really isn't too much to know. So what I started doing was I started breaking down every section of a paper into three most important points that I could identify based on now what I was reading more efficiently. And believe me, within a matter of trying my hand at this strategy over a couple of papers, I was not only becoming great at finding out what I needed to focus on, it was happening really quickly. This, of course, is aided a little by prior knowledge of the background that I was looking for, but then that's something that we all generally have anyway. And even if we don't, the first few pages, which are usually the slowest to read up, drop a great deal of hints. Now, some of you may ask, what if there are more than three important points? That's very possible, yes? Here's the trick in that case. The moment you figure out the three most important points, while you're scanning the remaining text, your brain will automatically help you find patterns that it feels will justify what you've chosen to focus on. For example, 
try reading what's coming on your screen now. If you've read correctly, the text will read, this text is jumbled quite substantially and still makes sense. This is the power of the brain that you can leverage to make sense of even jumbled lettering. It is this very power that you will automatically hone in the process of identification without actually taxing your brain. You're literally tricking your brain to helping you connect stuff without reading or focusing too much on it explicitly. And this automatically led me to the third step of the process, M, making sense of the three most important points that you zeroed in on. Practically, as you master the arts of step one and two, three, in fact, starts happening quite in parallel. As I was reading, my brain was connecting the dots in much the same manner as yours did in the sentence I just showed you a couple of minutes ago. It automatically started imputing meaning to the information based on the context, which I was now just quickly skimming over. And now you see, suddenly, there's a sense of clarity that starts coming in from stuff that you actually didn't know and stuff that you haven't particularly even worked on focusing on. This is what amazed me a lot. In no time now, I was actually reading much faster, engaging with the content much sharper and analyzing the information much clearer and better than what I was ever doing before. And all this happened in just three SIM steps. I haven't even reached the PLE part yet, so yes, the making sense of stuff part becomes much quicker and much easier if you're automatically great at sensory involvement and identification a few pages down and making sense becomes very, very easy because now the brain also has context to connect the information to. Now, this was going wonderfully well for me personally until I hit an unexpected roadblock sometime during my teaching journey. The thing is, I didn't realize that there are a few more things I was unconsciously doing till my students needed me to help them do better. And that's where it hit me. Step number four, P, personalizing, is a vital cog in the entire process that most people don't really understand too well. Now, what is personalizing? I'm sure many of you here are fans of Sherlock, who have probably no doubt heard of the words memory palace, yes? So while I can't see you do it, let me still ask you to raise your hand in case you heard about this. I'm sure right now you've probably raised your hand. So what exactly does the memory palace or any similar technique achieve? The answer is as simple as it gets. It helps you to convert data to a form that you can easily connect with and hence visualize when you want and where you want. Now, some of us love images, while many others would probably love songs. I personally know a lot of students who've learned the entire periodic table with one song, which is a remarkable feat of personalizing learning. The trick is fairly simple. No matter what you want to learn quickly, after you've reached the SIM stage, you now convert these pieces of information into a format that you can best relate to be it an image, a song, a mnemonic, a crazy word, or even a movie scene. You'd be amazed how it helps to help you get quickly retaining content very, very fast. Now, picture this. Imagine a boy and a girl who've never met, but whose parents want them to get married to each other. Obviously, they've got two choices. One is resist meeting each other, never get to know each other. And therefore, when they get married, there are going to be hiccups along the way. Obviously, not the fastest of processes. The other is that they meet each other in a nice coffee shop, sit down without moving around too much, get to know each other comfortably, smooth out the issues. And of course, that will lead to a much more comfortable, much more better marriage in the long run. Right now, if you replace the boy and the girl with chemicals and if you replace the coffee shop with a catalyst providing a surface area for them to sit around and combine, you've just understood the mechanism of how a physical catalyst action happens to speed up a chemical reaction. Now that was fairly simple, wasn't it? And this is what I did to personalize things for myself and in turn, my students. It works even today. Now, many people ask me, 
Can you do this with all subjects? The answer is yes, of course. In mathematics, whenever I'm struggling with formulae, what I tend to do is I group similar formulae into bunches of two and three and create a correlation between these formulae. Now that way, even if I forget one of the formulae, the other formulae help me to remember what I'm forgetting. Now let me give you an example. We know that sine of three theta is three sine theta minus four sine cube theta, yes? Now, what I do in my head is, I think of it this way. I think of sine and cos as somewhat opposites of each other. So if I replace a sine with a cos, what I do is I replace every plus with a minus and vice versa. Now, suddenly that leads me to the easy way of remembering the formula for cos three theta, which is four cos cube theta minus three cos theta. You see, this may seem like an easy example to work with, but the point is that the same general principles can be used on many other formulae, right? You can easily choose to replace the sine with the cos, the plus with the minus, and that opens up a bunch of possibilities which will help you to remember a lot of different formulae very, very easily. Now, that wasn't too hard to figure out with this trick, was it? This is the beauty of personalizing. Many people would probably now feel that that's the end of the trick. You don't really need anything more to do. But actually, there are two very, very important small steps that people often skip, often neglect. Okay, The fifth step in the entire process here is L, letting go. And this is something that most people are actually unable to do once they start focusing on learning something. Ask yourself this, how many times have you gotten stuck with a particular problem and never gotten past it without wasting lots of time? If your answer is many times, I won't be surprised at all. That's just the way our brain is wired to work sometimes. We focus too hard on something and try to know everything about it without realizing that it's just fatiguing our brain and making us less productive on things that could otherwise still be managed. And here's where we need to learn to let go. Don't stick with the same content for too long. Move on. Even if you think the picture in your mind isn't fully evolved yet or that mnemonic hasn't seeped in completely, don't worry. Don't overtax your brain. The brain shouldn't get too bogged down or else it will stop listening to you. Just give your brain a small push and help it to move on. That way, it will help you to focus a lot better. Remember, we're trying to speed up the process of learning here and letting go allows you to learn most of what you need to on a faster timeline. Finally, we reach the sixth and final step that clinches the deal completely. E. Evaluate yourself at short intervals. Remember I told you not to stick to learning that one bit of information for too long? But that doesn't mean that you don't come back to it. By all means, this is perhaps the most underestimated step. Now, keep revisiting what you've committed to your memory periodically to check how well you've learned. For you, that period can be an hour, a day, or a week. But the key is to keep on fleetingly coming back. Remember, don't stick to it. Just revisit it and evaluate how well you know what you know. Make this your feedback mechanism. This will help you build a long-term memory and also allow you to understand what kind of information sticks longer and better for you. And that will help you make the slight tweaks in the learning process that will help you overcome any small drawbacks that you may face along the way. Well, it really is that simple to learn anything super quick. All you need now is a little effort to put these six steps into practice and I'm hoping that after today, each one of you embarks on your own remarkable, simple, super quick learning journeys. Thank you.